Hey, in this video I'm going to talk about CSS transition and its different properties and then wrap up with a small example that showcases what can be done with it. In CSS, usually when you want a value of a property to be changed after an event, let's say hovering an element for instance, that value gets changed from its first state to the new one instantly, which can be not interesting as effect to say the least. However, with transition you can set a duration for that change and see how it affects the element for that period of time. As you can see, the square size gets bigger instantly. Now let's add transition and start with the first property which is duration. As its name suggests, it represents the duration of the change. Transition delay. This property delays the change of the element state for a period of time. Transition property. This property specifies which of the element's properties to animate. In this case, I'm changing the scale only, but what if I want to change the opacity too? As you can see, the scale has been changed progressively. On the other hand, the opacity has been changed instantly because we haven't specified explicitly that we need a transition for the opacity change. Now, the opacity also takes one second to go from 100% to 10%. We can set all to add transition to every property of the element, or simply not use it at all. Transition timing function. Well, this is the fun part of transition. Thanks to this property, you can add effects to the change of the state of the element, like an elastic or maybe bouncing effect. You can combine all of the previous properties in one single line, or just parts of them if you want to.
A good example of what we can do with the transition property is a thumbnail that shows components when it gets hovered. This is the second of a series of videos that covers the web animation topic, so make sure to not miss any of the coming videos by subscribing, and see you in the next one.